Good evening, I'm Alma Angeles, and you're watching Eagle News International. On tonight's headlines... Ukraine has rejected an ultimatum to surrender the besieged port city of Mariupol to Russian forces, according to its deputy prime minister. Russia blames Ukrainian nationalists for an ammonia leak reported at the uh, Sumy Kimfram facility, which produces fertilizers in the city of Sumy. Hong Kong is set to resume international flights from the U.S., Britain, and seven other countries, according to the government, announcing it as part of a loosening of some of the world's toughest COVID restrictions. And the Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, Undersecretary, uh, made the proposal to implement a four-day work week that would help workers both in the private and public sectors amid the high prices of oil and commodities. First in our news, Ukraine rejected an ultimatum to surrender the besieged city of Mariupol, according to its deputy prime minister, telling local media and demanding that Moscow instead allow hundreds of thousands of terrified residents safe passage out. Russia's Ministry of Defense had earlier said Ukraine had until 5 a.m. on March 21 to respond to Russian proposals, warning that more than a court martial awaits those who do not surrender. Take a look. Официальные власти Киева призываем к благоразумию и отмене ранее отданных указаний, которые обязывали боевиков пожертвовать собой и стать в кавычках мучениками Мариуполя. Кроме того, настаиваем на официальном письменном ответе украинской стороны до 5 утра завтра, то есть 21 марта, на все перечисленные чисто гуманные предложения Российской Федерации we can talk about surrendering weapons, according to uh, Irina Verichuk, telling Ukrainska Pravda hours before a Russian deadline. She also demanded that Moscow instead open humanitarian corridors to allow an estimated 350,000 people still trapped in the city to leave. Mariupol is a pivotal target in Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine, providing a land bridge between Russian forces in Crimea to the southwest and Russian-controlled territory to the north and east. And in his latest video address, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky accused Russia of bombarding a Mariupol school sheltering hundreds, calling it an act of terror that will be remembered even in the next century. He said Russian forces have come to exterminate the U.S. or exterminate us to kill us. It was the latest yeah. potentially devastating it's strike on a shelter for civilians. Dedication. Last Wednesday, a theater where authorities said more than 1,000 people had sheltered was hit with the hundreds still pursued missing in the rubble. Mariupol officials have said occupying forces have forcibly transported around 1,000 residents to Russia and then stripped them of their Ukrainian passports possible war crime. A group of children stuck in a Mariupol clinic for weeks are among those who have been taken to Russian-controlled territory, according to a carer and a relative of the clinic worker. The 19 children, aged between 4 and 17, and mostly orphans, had been living in freezing cellars, hiding from shelling in harrowing conditions. Meanwhile, European Union foreign policy chief Josef Borrell decried Russia's attack on the Ukrainian port city of Mariupol as a massive war crime as the bloc discusses imposing more sanctions on Moscow. Take a look. This is a war crime, a massive war crime what's happening in Mariupol. The city will be completely destroyed and people will be, are dying. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President uh, Volodymyr Zelensky has urged Israel to abandon its effort to maintain neutrality following Russia's invasion, saying the time had come for the Jewish state to firmly back his country. Take a look. Можна довго запитувати, чому ми не можемо отримати від вас зброю, або чому Ізраїль не вів потужні санкції проти Росії. Чому не тисне на російський бізнес, але відповідь все одно обирати вам. 
шановні брати і сестри, і вам з цією відповіддю потім жити, народи Ізраїлю. Українці зробили свій вибір. 80 років тому рятували євреїв, і тому серед нас є праведники народів світу. Народи Ізраїлю. Тепер і у вас є такий вибір. Зеленський, який є також юдеш, зробив апел під адрес до ізраїльських лавників. The latest in a series of speeches by video conference to foreign legislatures. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has walked a careful diplomatic line since Russia launched its invasion on February 24, stressing Israel's strong ties to Moscow and Kiev. Prime Minister Bennett has sought to preserve delicate security cooperation with Russia, which has troops in Syria across Israel's northern border. Bennett has held regular phone calls with Zelensky and Russian President Vladimir Putin as well, including a three-hour meeting with Putin at the Kremlin on March 5. At least six people were killed in the bombing of a shopping center in northwest Kiev. According to an AFP reporter at the scene, the 10-story building is completely destroyed in the blast. Images show the destruction of multi-story buildings in the southeastern outskirts of Kharkiv. Meanwhile, following shelling on uh, the 18th and the 19th of March, Russia also said Sunday it has again fired its newest Kinshal cypersonic missiles in Ukraine, destroying a fuel shortage or fuel storage site in the country's south. The Russian Defense Ministry also said it killed more than 100 members of Ukrainian special forces and foreign mercenaries when it targeted a training center yeah. in the town of Ovrach in northern Ukraine with sea-based missiles. The Kinjal or Dagger hypersonic missile missiles were fired from airspace over Russian-controlled Crimea, according to the ministry, adding that caliber cruise missiles launched from the Caspian Sea had also targeted the depot. On Saturday, Russia said it had used the Kinshal cypersonic missiles to destroy an underground missile and ammunition storage site in western Ukraine close to the border with NATO member Romania. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky blasted uh, Nestle for carrying on business as usual with Russia, even now when there are threats from Russia to other European countries, in a live address to a Swiss rally. Take a look. Неможливо бути байдужим, коли вбивають дітей. Станом на сьогоднішній ранок російська армія вбила 112 українських дітей. Good food, good life. Хороша їжа, хороше життя. Так звучить слоган компанії Nestle. Вашої компанії, яка відмовляється залишити Росію. І навіть зараз, зараз, коли звідти лунають погрози ще іншим країнам Європи. Zelensky urged Swiss companies to stop doing business in Russia and told the country's banks to freeze funds belonging to the Kremlin elite. Zelensky called for them to be stripped of their properties and privileges to cheers from the crowd. The number of rich Russians resident in Switzerland has grown in recent years. Meanwhile, Kyiv Mayor Vitaly Klitschko announced a new curfew for the Ukrainian capital that will last until Wednesday morning. Take a look. Комендантська година в Києві та області знову буде посилена. Розпочнеться вона сьогодні у 20.00 і триватиме до 7 ранку, 23 березня, тобто до післязавтра. Магазини, аптеки, заправки, установи працювати завтра не будуть. The Ukrainian capital has had a series of curfews since the start of the war nearly four weeks ago, with the latest one lasting 35 hours last week. Russian forces have penetrated Kiev suburbs on several sides but have not entered the capital where streets have been heavily fortified against the expected assault. Meanwhile, here are images here on your screen of rescue crews picking through smoldering rubble as bodies lay on the ground after a deadly overnight Russian strike hit this popular shopping mall in northwestern Kiev. At least six people were killed in this bombing. 
And Russia is blaming Ukrainian nationalists for an ammonia leak reported at the Sum Kimprom facility, which produces fertilizers in the city of Sumy. Take a look. В городе Сумы ночью была реализована спланированная провокация украинских националистов, о которой несколько дней назад официально предупреждала Минобороны России. По заявлению главы Сумской областной администрации, на заводе Сумы Химпром произошла утечка миака. Напомню, что еще 19 марта мы официально предупредили о минировании данного предприятия украинскими националистами для совершения провокации с целью обвинения России в якобы применении химического оружия. Хочу в очередной раз подчеркнуть, Вооруженные силы Российской Федерации не планировали и не наносят никаких ударов по украинским объектам хранения или выработки ядовитых веществ. Координат... Residents of the northern Ukrainian town of Novoselitsia were told Monday to temporarily take shelter after an ammonia leak at a nearby chemical factory amid intense fighting with Russian forces in the area. The extent and cause of the incident was not immediately clear and residents were told to seek refuge in basements or on lower levels of buildings to avoid exposure. Refugees in the Polish border city of Premzil are en route, en route to other European destinations. The war in Ukraine, which Russian President Vladimir Putin launched on February 24 to stamp out the pro-Western leanings in the ex-Soviet country, has sparked the fastest growing refugee crisis in Europe since World War II. Take a look. It's um, strange. It's just strange. Uh, when I when I go to sleep, I don't know if I wake up or no. Just like this. Right now, my mom is my. Um, Little brother with me, but my elder brother with my grandma uh, stay in Ichnia. Because uh, uh, my brother can't go abroad and he sit with my grandma. Uh, it's re it's really terrible to live there because every day and every night you hear these sounds like the bombs falling down. And the news continues here on Eagle News. We'll be right back. Alam namin ang iyong pagsisikap. Dama namin ang iyong mga sakripisyo. Kita namin ang pagharap mo sa bawat pagsubok. Kaya sa kabila ng mga hamon ng buhay, nandito kami para umalalay. Kasi katulad mo, gusto rin namin ang magandang bukas para sa kanya. Hatid namin ang dekalidad na edukasyon at makabagong pasilidad sa abot kayang halaga. Kaya huwag ka na mangamba, sasamahan ka namin to pa rin ang mga pangarap niya. Maaasahan mong sulit dito ang mga pinagsikapan mo sa aming mga makabagong pasilidad at sistema ng edukasyon. May 
ilalabas natin ang aking talino at mga kakayahan niya. Kahit sa munting halaga, makakasiguro ka na makakasabay siya sa mabilis na pag-ikot ng mundo. Sa new era, karamay mo kami sa bawat hamon. Kaagapay mo kami sa bawat hakbang. Kasama mo kami sa bawat niti at tagumpay. Mula noon hanggang ngayon, gabay natin ang MTRCB ratings sa matalino at responsabling panonood. Sa tamang pagsunod sa MTRCB ratings, ginagawa nating ligtas at makabuluhan ang panonood ng bawat miyembro ng Pamilyang Pilipino. Lumipas man ang panahon hanggang may Pamilyang Pilipino, andyan ang MTRCB. Welcome back. The Department of Health on Monday reported that the daily average COVID cases of 510 from March 14 to the 20th is 13% lower than the new infections prior to the week in review. In its latest case bulletin, the DOH said there are 3,572 new cases of COVID-19 for the recent week. Now, for the same period, only one case was added to the tally of severe and critical infections, which went down to 805 from last week's 1,006. Only 17.8% or 619 out of the 3,473 ICU beds in the country are used, while 16.6% of 4,532 non-ICU beds are utilized. Meanwhile, there were 655 verified deaths recorded during the past week. And vaccinations and COVID health restrictions have significantly decreased in the country, but an, expert's, an expert warned that the country could still face a COVID resurgence. Take a look. Well, pinag-aaralan naman lagi. May metrics naman po talaga tayo. At uh, yun nga, yung alert level 1 kasi, 100% uh, naman yung capacity. But really, the questions are if kailangan ba natin i-retain itong mga dedicated beds sa hospitals or baka pwede ng accordion, uh, pwede na ba nating uh, pag-isipan kung there are situations where we can relax the mask mandate. At uh, lahat po ito, pinag-aaralan at uh, sa ngayon, I think kabado rin lahat kasi nakita natin halos 200,000 cases per day sa Vietnam, umabot ng 600,000 cases sa, um, sa South Korea in a day. So, I think that everybody is more in favor of a cautious approach. Uh, Pag-aaralan natin kung magbigay pa tayo ng uh, more concessions sa mga to na safe, uh, bakit hindi? Pero sa ngayon, there's a lot of uncertainty um, and uh, right now, swerte talaga tayo, mababa pa, pa rin yung cases natin. But this can change, lalong-lalo na pag uh, masyado nating mabilis uh, i-decrease yung ating restrictions. Dahil for now, gumagana naman ang masking natin, ang ating vaccination rates at yung mga protocols natin at sumusunod naman ng mga tao. Well, yung tinatawag na hybrid immunity, uh, dalawang klase ito. No? So, kung nagkaroon ka ng COVID, tapos nagpabakuna ka. So, hybrid immunity yon. Or, kung nabakunahan ka, tapos nagkaroon ka ng breakthrough infection, ang tawag doon hybrid immunity, parang na-boost ng natural infection yung iyong dating pagbabakuna. Now, in general, ayaw mo talaga mahawa ng COVID as much as possible dahil uh, kahit bakunado tayo, mababa yung chance na mamatay, pero hindi po pa rin yung zero. Pero, Kung magkaroon ng isang breakthrough infection or nagkaroon na kayo ng COVID at nagpabakuna kayo, that kind of immunity is actually the most durable and the most effective. Um, dahil kinumpara po nila yan sa mga taong hindi pa nagpapabakuna uh, at uh, natural immunity ra, uh, malayong malayo po talaga yung efekto uh, compared to hybrid immunity. At doon naman sa mga nabakunahan at hindi pa nakaka-COVID and later on nagkaroon ng breakthrough, hindi pa rin kasing lakas compared to dun sa hybrid immunity. 
the best pa rin is hindi po talaga tayo mahawa at tuloy po tayo magpa-vaccinate and magpa, uh, magpa-boost. Mm-hmm. Ngunit, kung magkaroon man ng breakthrough infection, yung risk na uh, mild lang yung lalabas at yung subsequent immunity and protection against reinfection, napakalakas po. Meanwhile, Hong Kong will resume international flights from nine countries, including the U.S. and Britain in April, according to its city leader, leader, Carrie Lam. The United States, Britain, France, and Australia were among the nine countries on the list. On Monday, Lam said starting April 1, Hong Kong will lift, uh, remove flight bans known as a circuit breaker for the nine countries. Lam's administration has been pummeled for its handling of the COVID crisis for putting out unclear messages about proposed mass testing and lockdown measures. Fear of being caught in a sudden lockdown fueled panic, causing residents earlier to strip supermarket shelves bare and led to a record high exodus of both foreign and local residents. By mid-March, Hong Kong recorded a net outflow of more than 134,000 people leaving the city. And New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern announced the early scrapping of strict border controls, which will first allow vaccinated Australian travellers before a broader relaxation to other international tourists. Take a look. Today I'm announcing the next stage in our border reopening work. Our border has already reopened to New Zealanders from around the world. And on Monday, critical and skilled workers also became eligible to enter without isolation to shore up our workforces in industries such as agriculture, technology and construction as our economy rebounds. And we have now received guidance that it is safe to significantly bring forward the next stage of border reopening work. We're ready to welcome the world back. And today, I can confirm From 11.59 p.m. Tuesday, 12 April, vaccinated Australians can travel to New Zealand. And from 11.59 p.m. Sunday, the 1st of May, vaccinated travellers from visa waiver countries and those with valid visitor visas can travel to New Zealand. I'm proud that New Zealand is a country able in this moment in time to provide a safe place for our tourists to return to. And during my international engagements this year, I will be helping to lead the charge to accelerate the growth of our top export markets, our primary sector and our tourism sector, encouraging people to buy New Zealand made and also to come and see us for themselves. And a China Eastern passenger jet carrying 133 people has crashed in southwest China and caused a mountain fire with casualties still unknown, according to its state broadcaster, CCTV. The Boeing 737 plane crashed in the rural countryside near Wuzhou City, Guangxi region, and had caused a mountain fire. According to CCTV, uh, the report added that rescue teams were dispatched to the scene. Local media reported that China Eastern Flight MU5735 had not arrived at its scheduled destination in Guangzhou after it took off from the city of Kunming shortly after 1 p.m. Monday, citing airport staff. There was no immediate response from China Eastern when contacted by AFP as of this report. And Belgium is mourning after a car plowed into a crowd of early morning carnival goers, killing six people, injuring dozens of others. But the authorities ruled out an act of terrorism. Here's the Belgian Prime Minister. Today was was supposed to be a, a festive day. Uh, was um, uh, was to be something special. After such a long period with uh, with COVID, unfortunately, it became a very dark day today. Um, we are here to support uh, everyone who, who suffered injuries, everyone who, who suffered the loss of, uh, of, of someone that was, that was dear to them. And we would like to thank um, our, our, um, our emergency services and everyone who did the impossible on a, on a very dark day for, uh, for our country. Now, the tragedy took place around 5 a.m. as the carnival in a district in the former coal mining town of La Louvre 
was getting underway. Investigators said the suspects were in 19, were born in 1988 and 1990 and came from La Louvier, a town near the French border in Belgium's Rust Belt. They were not known to the authorities for similar acts. Chief Prosecutor Christian Henry said the two were coming from a nightclub and had just dropped off another person just before the events. Blood test results were expected today and will allow them to say if they have consumed drugs. And North Korea fired multiple rocket launchers. According to Seoul, the latest in a series of provocations by the nuclear-armed nation to heighten tensions in the region. Now, four shots were fired into the western waters during a uh, span of an hour from 7.20 in the morning from an unspecified location in the South Pyongyang province, according to Yonhap News Agency. Pyongyang has long possessed the ability to devastate Seoul, which is only around 60 kilometers from the border with artillery fire. The U.S. stations uh, 28,500 troops in South Korea, a security ally, to protect it against its nuclear-armed neighbor. Sunday's firings comes just days after Pyongyang carried out a suspected failed ballistic missile test in what analysts say could be the country's new intercontinental ballistic missile. A proposal to implement a four-day work week would help workers both in the private and public sectors amid the high prices of oil and commodities that, according to DOLE or the Department of Labor and Employment. Let's listen in. Mainam na may mga ganitong panukala uh, para na rin matulungan natin yung mga manggagawa, uh, lalong-lalo na ngayong tumataas po yung presyo ng gasolina at iba pang commodities. Uh, Inform lang po natin ang publiko, ang four-day work week po ay hindi po ito bago. Uh, ginamit na din po ito nung mga nakaraang krisis, uh, pang financial, at ginagawa din po ito ng ibang mga pribadong kumpanya, sektor. Karamihan sa mga kumpanya, ang araw ng kanilang pasok ay anim na araw sa loob ng isang linggo. Doon po sa isang linggong yun, meron pong 48 hours na trabaho. Ito po yung tinatawag po nating normal hours of work. Now, auna po, pwede po nilang i-compress o paikliin po yung araw. We compress the work week, the normal work week of six days to four days. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, rinirritain pa rin po natin yung normal hours of work in a week na 48 hours. Ito po yung tina magiging magiging apat na araw na lang ang pasok sa dating walong uh, sa dating anim na araw pero i-compress lang po natin yung yung oras ng 48 hours of normal work in a week. Yung pangalawa po na pwedeng gawin ng employer sa pag-implement po ng 4-day work week, babawasan yung araw ng pasok at dahil po diyan, mababawasan din po yung oras ng pasok sa loob ng isang linggo. So karaniwan po ang ginagawa ng mga kumpanya, yung unang option kinocompress lang po nila yung araw ng pasok from 6 to 4 hours. And finally, the Batman continued swinging from the rooftops this weekend, taking in an estimated box office leading $36.8 million in North American theaters while performing strongly overseas, according to Industry Watcher Exhibitor Relations, reporting this on Sunday. The dark and gritty superhero film from Warner Brothers, starring Robert Pattinson in the title role, has passed the $300 million mark domestically in just three weeks, while nearly doubling that figure overseas with $598 million. In second place for the Friday through Sunday period was another dark film, the fantasy animation Jujutsu Kaisen O from Crunchyroll Funimation, 95% owned by Sony Pictures. The third spot went to Sony's Uncharted at $8 million. Tom Holland plays an Indiana Jones-style treasure hunter. Got a nice ring. A new friend of yours. And that's it for tonight's broadcast. Thank you for joining us. As always, I'll end the day on a thoughtful note. Our ability to look back and smile at our past is proof that God's plan is to keep us moving forward.
This has been Eagle News International. I'm Alma Angeles. Stay alert, stay informed, because we live in interesting times. Good night.